Peggy, can I ask you to come up and light our Christ candle for us? And as we light this Christ candle, let's say together. We light this candle to remind us that the light of Christ lives within each one of us. Together, I am the light of Christ. And we are blessed. And now is the time for our gratitude and sharing. Well, certainly, I, well, I guess I won't share first. Well, why don't we go to Penny? Um, I am just so grateful that my friend Julie is able to come to our church because she used to come before. Um, and so here she is, and I'm just grateful that she can be here. And Julie, I'm going to dance a few steps for us. Also, we love her too. Anyone else would like to share? Not seeing anybody, we will give thanks for everyone who is here today. And especially, we want to introduce our musicians. 
And we have over on the keyboard, we have uh, Nancy. We have Jacob on the piano. We have Jeff on the... Now, I call that the Tennessee Black Pop And we have uh, Peggy doing our vocals. Thank you very much. We are blessed. And for that, we're going to lead them right into our joy song. And we want everyone to join in that also with love comes trickling down. If you're comfortable, stand.
Well, we're going to get them in a second. I'm going to have you have pick them all up, but I'm going to have you pick them up in order. Can you help me pick them up in order? What goes first? Everybody tell them what goes first. We're going to put that one down. Zero. Right? Zero. zero goes first. Can you find zero? Pick up zero for me. Yeah, that's zero. Very good. Where is one? Can you get one for me? Oh, that's three. Where's one? There's one. Good job. What so we've got zero, one. What comes after one? Two. Where's two? Can you find two? It's the orange one. It's the orange one. There you go. Two. And now the, your favorite number, how old you are, three comes next. Where's each yellow? There's your three. He knows his colors, and I think he knows his numbers. I assumed he did. Four, that's five. Where's four? It's also on green, but it's light green. Four! What else comes after four? Then we get five. Where's five? Right over here. It's the dark green. Five. What comes next, guys? Six. Can you find six for me? It's right here. You want to pick it up and give it to me? The light blue is six. And the dark blue is seven. Where's the dark blue? Where's the seven? Seven. 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 That's not eight. That's nine. Where's eight? <gasps> There's eight. All right. What do you got? So just like these numbers go in order, there is order in our life. It's one of the 12 powers we have over here. It's the, the olive green one here. You see the orange flag on the wall? Do you see the orange one? There's a green one next to it. That's order. And order is one of our powers that we have inside of us. And it helps us keep our room tidy and pick up our toys. Order helps us put things away and put the silverware out at the table when we're going to eat a meal. You know how to put the plate on the table? And you put uh, what you put next to it. She makes dinner and then you eat it. That's right. But what do you put the food in with your mouth with? Rice. A rice? Well, you pick up the rice with your hand. What do you pick it up with? with a spoon and a fork. And there's order of where they go on the table, right? And mommy shrimp. <laughs> shrimp and rice. And so do you pick up the shrimp with a spoon? What do you pick the shrimp up with? You're out. <laughs> With a fork, and there's order where they go on the table. A dinosaur. Well, dino that's part of order, too. Dinosaurs lived a long time ago, but we wouldn't be here if there hadn't been dinosaurs. So everything comes in order. And do you know why that is? <laughs> Maybe in a past life, perhaps. But you know what? Maybe when you were a, a, a little bird. A pterodactyl, that's right, they all live, but they're all that order in the dinosaurs, Rocky. because come, come, next. And I see, what do you see Rocky doing it? Yes, a Rockyosaurus, that's right. So, you know, well, just like there's order in the dinosaurs, and which which is over the other, who's the biggest the dinosaur? With the stagosaurus, which is the biggest dinosaur that eats all the rest? No, no, you're the baby dinosaur. Baby dinosaurs. But there's an order to the dinosaurs, and that is just how God works in our life. Just like with the numbers, just like the silverware on the table, just like with the dinosaurs living before we did, there is order in the universe, and that all comes from God. Where does the order come from? God. Can you say that? The order. And Reverend Ken is going to take you back to class.
our Lord's Prayer. If you'd like to stand, you may. Oh, we were going to say seated to this. And you may sing along. <coughs> and this is just you to the Lord's nature, 
and in life's grand rhythms and minuscule movements. And the editorial comment is here. We do have tornadoes, we have floods, we have forest fires, we have accidents, we have all kinds of things that make me stop and think. And that's why I'm here today to learn and grow. I too reflect the brilliance of God. My ideas, dreams, and all I do to make my mark on the world are just some of the ways the divine expresses uniquely as me. Living from my divinity, I bring more of God's light into the world. His inspirational words were inspired by 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And all of us, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Now it's that time in our morning service for our meditation. So if you'd like to join me, taking a few deep breaths, and just go with me. Just feel that light and love that's within you. Feel that, that energy that moves us forth, that helps us to grow, to understand, to live a wonderful life. Go deep. Ask whatever question you want. And know, know in your heart that that question will be answered. So whatever it is that you desire, let it be. Open the door and let it happen. If we just get out of our minds, Drop to that hard line. It's only 18 inches. It doesn't take much when you just take that deep breath. And as you really let it out, the shoulders can drop. The arms can fall in. And you can feel the chair holding you, knowing that that's God. God has you. And no matter what is going on. So through those powers, let's take another deep breath and go, go deeply in that silence. Reflect on whatever you want, whatever those desires are, whatever love and light that is within. So join me.
for them as we come back into this room. We come back knowing whatever we've asked for. If you haven't heard this morning, maybe you didn't quite open up the but it's there and it will come. With a grateful heart, I would like to ask each and every one of you right now to open up and bring those friends and family into our community prayer where we can hold each and every one of them in that same life and love. So if you'll join me by repeating their names aloud. Mind means God, believe it or not. 
And so our minds are God expressing, however we choose to show up. And that's the universal principle. It follows these 12 principles. It follows that order when we're aligned with God. And then flesh means human sense, consciousness, ego, head thoughts, thinking less than, thinking lack, thinking all those other things that we don't want to do. Right? That's when we're in the flesh consciousness. Right? And then um, God is the Almighty One, the Creator, the Eternal, that infinite presence that exists in pervades all, every atom and cell of our bodies, every atom and cell of the entire universe is changing, it's always good. And the law here is the faculty of mind that holds every thought and act strictly to the truth of being. To the truth of being. That's the eternal law. That truth runs through it all. So the mind that is to submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. So we could read it as when we, as God, are second stuck in the human sense consciousness, anybody ever get there <laughs> besides me, uh, are hostile, or, or when we, as God, are stuck in human sense cons consciousness, we are hostile to the eternal principle. We're out of sync. Human sense consciousness does not submit to the eternal principle of that math mathematical faculty of the truth of being. Indeed, it cannot. So when we are stuck, when we are expressing God and stuck in that evil state, we're out of sync, right? And we've got to get back into sin. We can't be in alignment with God if we're stuck here. So our goal is to stay centered, just like our meditation brings us in, just like our prayer time. Whatever the practices is, are, when we play our music, my husband juggles, my son plays video, whatever it is, you're gardening, you're with animals, whatever it is that brings your heart joy, and you come back into that peace, place of peace, that's what we're shooting for. So what does this have to do with order? When we're stuck in sense consciousness, we can't be in the flow of spirit, and we can't feel and have divine order work in our lives. It always is at work, but sometimes it doesn't feel like that. So last week, my message was service with a smile. And that was how to follow your heart and allow God to sing through you and be of service in the world that brings you joy. Right? And so when we're in that place where we can give service with a smile, guess what? We're in the flow of spirit, and divine, divine order can be at work. And... Um, you know, sometimes, you know, with divine order, there's always greater good. Greater good is always going to come when we're in the flow and we recognize divine order working in our lives. And then greater good is going to come. But sometimes it's hard to see the greater good. It's hard to see like what you were talking about, Al, right? It, it's sometimes really difficult to see that. But order is one of those 12 powers, those 12 faculties of man over here I pointed out to Blaze, our olive green order. It aligns with a disciple, a part of our body, a color, and a month for children. So we said, when I, I learned as a kid, September order, James, son of Alpheus, opposed to James, son of Zeth, son of Alpheus, dark green, and it's here in our intestines. Divine order. If our intestines are out of whack, we kind of create disorder in our life, right? We don't, we don't like that much. So we need, it's a perfect place for it, isn't it? To have order right there. And it's one of the disciples that Jesus Christ fully expressed. He expressed all of them fully. All of these, we're working to align all of these in our bodies and in our lives so they're out working in the world. So, divine 
This also comes from the revealing word, where which was written by Charles Fillmore, UE's co-founder, and all of the other definitions are from this gem of a book as well. Um, and he says that divine is that of or relating to or proceeding directly from God. So divine is something from God, right? The alignment God. The God expressing his true faculty, being eternal, creator. And then order, he says, is to put in order or arrange. It is not marked by chaos, but governed by law. So in order, things feel good. They feel like they're in the flow. A key sign is when we feel chaos. We're out of sync, and our job is to breathe and come back so we can get that flow to go again. So we're living in divine order. Charles Fillmore divine, defined order as the first law of the universe. We say the greatest of these is love, but everything wouldn't have happened in the way it has happened, you know, like we said, from dinosaurs to here or, the, you know, whatever. It, it's all in order. It's all as it can be. He said there would be no universe at all unless the various parts were kept in perfect order. And when the facts of spirit are understood in their right relation, they are orderly. Orderliness is law and the test of true science. You know, when you, um, what, you what happens when you put water in a kettle and you turn it on? It gets oil. Hot. And if you leave it on there long enough, what happens? It boils and then it evaporates. That's the order. That is order at work. I bet you you can't go home and turn on a kettle of water and make it not boil and evaporate. It is a law. And that law is science. And it is a reflection of the divine. That orderliness is. So now I'm going to go back to another talk that I gave on May 21st, which my message was entitled, Put Some God on It, and I talked about that when he said, Put Some God on It, we're teenagers. We've been taught, brought up in unity, to say divine order to divine order, divine order, divine order. Anytime we were confronted by a situation that we didn't understand or caused an internal chaos for us, divine order, divine order. Now, walking down the school halls in high school, saying divine order would not have been like really cool. So we would say, D-O, 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 D-O. And people were thought we were singing a song or something. And my sister just shortened it to, you remember? Oh, doo-doo. She would just say, oh, doo-doo. And that was, you know, everybody thought she was just politely swearing, right? But she really wasn't. She was saying, divine order, God, divine order, God. That's a tool that you can use in your daily life to affirm it. When we get frustrated, it's a great tool, especially. We can use it like that. As long as we remember that we're asking to see the divine order in things. So what does it look, order look like? We see it in the order of numbers, right? We see it in the way we put our key in the car and we turn it on and it goes, right? We see it that when we turn on the faucet, water comes out. And then if we turn on the hot water, hot water comes out. And when it doesn't, a kink is in it. We know it's not in divine order, which gets seasons in the colors and the blooming. We see it in the flowers of when they bloom at their own rate. We wouldn't try and pry them apart because that wouldn't be in order, right? It wouldn't, it would never bloom. You can't open a chrysalis before it's done becoming a butterfly. We have to wait. That is order. We see it in the, the new growth following the devastation of a fire. We see Embryo, embryo to an infant to a child all the way through adulthood. The order that happens when we're born that goes through. Now I know I've, so I've seen great demonstrations of divine order in my life. I, I told you about when I was hit by a car when I was 21 and the first words, I, I nearly died in that accident, but the first words out of my mouth were divine order. I had been programmed a little bit. I don't remember saying that, but I knew in my heart that greater good was coming. My brother, I, I don't remember saying that. My brother swears I did because he was standing right there and he's going, what? He said, what, something else. But uh, he's going, what are you thinking? <laughs> anyway, but that was divine order for me. And I did not see, or my family could not see greater good coming from that one. It was pronounced great.
brain dead. I also told you about my fiance number three, I, and I was devastated, but he made his transition from melanoma cancer 11 years later. I would have been a young widow with young children. Divine order. And after my fiance cheated on me, my brother got me to agree to go to a Unity Young Adult Conference, right? And um, some YOU friends of mine who I had known in YOU, in the Youth of Unity, had gotten married, unbeknownst to me, and they were going to attend this conference. And then um, the wife was newly pregnant, and then her husband lost her job two days before the conference. And she says, you got to stay home. you got to find a job. So he didn't come. And my husband was told about the conference, and he could go because he had been juggling on the streets in Montreal, and he was basically unemployed at the moment. And so he, five hours later, he got in a car and drove to Colorado where I met him. Divine order. He would not have been there had all those things not happened. Divine order. And then when I got my degree in business, because my dad said, if you don't know what you want to do, it will always help you, I thought I'd go into retail management. But then I missed being with kids, because I had gone through high school and college working my way through by being a babysitter and a nanny. I missed children. So the smog in LA put me in the hospital, and I had to quit my student teachings, which gave me a whole big lump in my curriculum. I had to wait, right? And so in order for me to wait, I had this extra semester. And then the, the um, counselor said, well, if you just take this extra semester, you will have a master's in education, in curriculum development and teaching, rather than just teaching certificate. And I said, OK, whatever, divine order. So I went the extra time to school. And you know, I thought it was for teaching, but it wasn't. It was for me to be hired at a very young age to be in charge of all the teen and uh, middle school and high school teen consultancy in the Great Lakes region. I, I did rallies and um, retreats and stuff for kids. And they would have never hired me without both of those degrees. So divine order is at work. Even when I like the I was doing, it doesn't always work that way. So and I was going, God, I need another example because my talk is done here, right? And um, this morning, I came in. This is where the divine order works. I was going, Scott, I need another example. And he's going, and one will come up. <laughs> divine order. So I came in this morning, and the sprinklers were running. And they're never running on Sunday mornings. And so I had to walk around and come my flip-flops wet, more importantly, because then I'd slip. So I came in the back door and opened it up, and then eventually, after the musicians got here, the water had turned off, and I'm going, divine order, thank you, God. Well, then they came back on again, right? And they were wrong, they, wrong. you got all wet coming in, didn't you? The sandals got wet, but thankfully you've got good grip on those. And so I thought, okay, God, divine order. So I called the gentleman who's in charge of this property, management as far as doing work around here. And I called him up and told him about it. He said, well, you're going to have to call the owner because I'm not out of town. And he goes, he said, oh, about your son. And he had assumed my son, he'd worked for him a, a day before. And he had asked if he had gotten a job yet. He wasn't going to even call because he was sure he'd gotten a job, which he has not yet because nobody's called him back. But all in divine order, he needs him to work Friday and Saturday here. To help with, and that would have never happened. I wouldn't know that if the sprinklers hadn't come on. <laughs> so divine order, divine order is always works, and now he's going to work Friday and Saturday. So, and uh, I see that as divine order. He was not going to call, and then I called, and now I, then I called the owner, and he's going to get that taken care of. So it doesn't. We've never had them come on on Sunday mornings. They don't come on, but they added extra cycles because the grass has been so brown because of the heat, which makes sense. Not for us anyway. Maybe on the other parts of the property, but not over here. So God's order is divine order. It's when we are in alignment with that Christ within. When we're fully expressing in each and every moment. Getting that ego, human sense, flesh consciousness out of the way. And we have it. It comes up. We're humans. It's part of our job to overcome it, to catch ourselves in order, to get ourselves back to that. You 
you know, so divine order is God's law without the chaos. And I don't know about you, but I found chaos in my life. I, I, it happens. It does. And then we get the opportunity to practice our truth, to come in alignment with the principle, rise up and affirm divine order. Say that with me right now. Divine order. And we have an affirmation. My life is constantly blessed with divine order. Will you say that with me three more times? My life is constantly blessed with divine order. My life is constantly blessed with divine order. My life is constantly blessed with divine order. Perhaps take that if you need to. You can take just divine order. But our lives are constantly being blessed with divine order, aren't they? They're constantly finding order at work, even in the midst of chaos, even when it doesn't look like it. Greater good follows. Growth happens. And we can come back into alignment, knowing that God is always in charge. Divine order is always at work in all areas so this week, when you find yourself frustrated or in chaos, I invite you to affirm divine order, to breathe, to bring yourself back into alignment, to get out of that flesh, human sense consciousness, and be God in alignment, be that expression of the Christ outward in the world, and affirm God's greater good is working. As you say, my life is constantly blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Till I 
comes to announcements. I was born to be the town crier. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> oh, no. I'd like to thank Adam for uh, working our soundboard today and also for uh, Diana and uh, Janice for being our ushers. We give thanks. Our uh, office will be open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. And uh, Mary Grace will be on a trip to the beach. Go down, is it Galveston or yeah, down Galveston way? So she'll be uh, back on, uh, uh, will not be here next Sunday. So all of you that are just biding your breath to hear me talk again, it'll be Sunday. <laughs> and if you need any prayer, you can see Kathy, myself, or Mary Grace after service. Also, we have a prayer service at 9.30 in the prayer room. So if you need any prayer on Sundays, uh, Diana facilitates our prayer circle. Also, you can check the bulletin board for any of our 12-step programs and their meeting times. And we have a class that will begin after church on 7.30. That is two weeks from today. And it'll be Living Originally. And that class is actually brought forth in a book by one of our Unity writers. Uh, so make plans also to join us for our fundraiser. We have a Riverfront Playhouse buyout of the Rainmaker, and that's on Wednesday, August the 9th. So if you are available, we're going to be here, please join us. The tickets are now on sale. Uh, the worship team would also uh, like to do a survey, and they'd like to have a survey about the service and the things that uh, you like about the service and some of the things you might like to change about the service. So if you have an interest to sign up for that team or to be a volunteer with them, then you can ask uh, Reverend Mary Grace. Also, uh, we're going to have a back-to-school festival, and the planning and assistance will be for Saturday, August the 19th. So if you'd like to participate with that, we'll still see Mary Grace. Sanctuary or on Facebook live streaming so that you can be with us a few days later on YouTube also. And you know, one thing came up during the week that maybe a lot of you don't know. We have a suggestion box. And we've had it for 25 years. And somebody said, I didn't know you had a suggestion box. And it's right over on that table underneath all of the name tags. There's a little bitty sign on it that says suggestion box. So anytime you have a suggestion, you'd like to see something happen, or you have an idea, don't hesitate to put it in that suggestion box. Anything else you'd like to cover? I just want to say that it's not 7.30. It's not 7.30. It's the not 7.30. That's the night. date. It's the date, July The date 30th. is July 30th. I should have probably clarified that. Right, July 30th, we have a new class starting, and it'll be right after church. And you can see that we uh, got Blaze all revved up with a little bit of God and spirit in that room, and we just filled him up. So we are blessed. Also, the, there's a flyer for that class, and we have three books available in the bookstore. The book isn't necessary, but you're welcome if you want to buy them. Hearing nothing else, why don't we... Uh, I have that little flyer here for a living original. And we also now are going to do our closing song, and that is the peace song. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm.